Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. Today we're going to be starting our fig cuttings. So I've got three different varieties of fig cuttings here. Some I got locally and some came over from someone in Oregon. I have to admit these have been sitting in the refrigerator for about a month now and I'm finally getting around to starting them. But I did start some last year that rooted just fine after being in a refrigerator for more than a month before they got to me and they did just fine. So I think we'll be okay. First thing we need to do is clean our cuttings. These are two of the Campanieres and they did come already labeled so I don't need to worry about labeling these ones. But the first thing we want to do is wash them really good. So we're just going to add a little bit of dish soap and I've got a brush here so we're just going to give them a little scrub. Rinse off all that soap. Now this one is our brown sugar crunch and I've only got one of these cuttings but it does have quite a few nodes on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the top is seven. So that's a pretty good number of nodes on there so I'm probably going to cut this one in half and have two cuttings. Now lastly we have four of these red Lebanese Baca Valleys and I've got two super thick cuttings. This is probably the thickest cutting I've ever tried rooting. And then we've got two thinner cuttings. All right, next we are going to disinfect the cuttings. So I'm going to use a bleach and water solution. So it's going to be 10 parts water and one part bleach. So I'm going to get 10 cups of warm water. And then we're going to add one cup of bleach. And then we're just going to swish it around a little bit. And then we're going to give our cuttings a little bath for about 30 seconds. All right, that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and just give them a quick rinse and then set them on a tray to dry. Now we're going to wait until these are super, super dry, um, at least probably a couple hours before I proceed to the, the next step and I will show you why. All right, now that our cuttings are nice and dry, we need to cut them to size. So you want to get some nice, clean and sharp pruners. So I'm going to actually be sanitizing these pruners with some rubbing alcohol. Get yourself a cotton ball and just wipe the blade both sides and make sure you get the, the edge of the blade as well. Okay, so this is our brown sugar crunch cutting that we're going to cut in half. So we want to have three nodes on the bottom half and we've got three nodes on the top. We're going to cut it right here. Okay, so we've got our two cuttings and now we're going to want to label these and this is the part where you want to make sure that these are really dry because trying to label these when they're wet does not work very well. So I'm using this white paint marker and I got this on Amazon. So that works really well for writing on these cuttings. So these are the, the brown sugar crunch. So I'm just going to label them with BSC. There we go. And also I wanted to show you how you tell which is the bottom from the top. Um, so you've got a small bud here on the top and then the chopped off part down here. So the chopped off part is the bottom of the cutting and the little bud up here is where the new leaf is going to come out when this gets rooted. And this is also where the figs will come out of. That is going to be the top of the cutting. All right, so we're going to cut, go ahead and cut the bottom off of the, the Campanieres here. I'm just going to cut off this one node. And you want to cut fairly close to the bud, but not super close. So maybe like a half an inch below that bud. And same on this one. We're going to cut right below. And I like to cut at a little bit of an angle. And you'll also want to look at the bottom where you cut it off. It should be fairly green. It shouldn't be brown. So these are looking pretty good. You could see there's some green there around the edges. So those are looking good. 
Okay, now we've got four of these Red Lebanese Baca Valley. So I really don't need that many. I'm going to go ahead and root them all, but I don't need to cut any of these in half. This one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's actually eight buds on this one, which is a little too many, um, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, a couple of these off. So we're going to cut two of those buds off so we'd be left with, with that much there. And we're also going to label these. So get out our pen. This is R, L, B, V for Red Lebanese Baca Valley. Now these fatter cuttings, um, the, it's already cut pretty close to the bottom, but I don't know if you can see, but that is looking pretty brown. So I'm going to... I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this node off because I just want to make sure that this cutting is actually still alive. Um, so we're going to, these are pretty spaced apart too, so you want to cut it all the way up to here where you're close to that node. All right, let's take a look. So yeah, we do see some green there, so that is a good sign, so it's not dead. So we're going to go ahead and root this one. Now there is a pretty big space between the top of the cutting and the node. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off some of that excess on the top. Okay. So this node, this, this cutting here is only going to be two nodes. So this one here, I'm going to go ahead and just cut a little bit off of the bottom. Okay, so we've got some green there, and we're going to cut a little bit off the top as well. And label this one. Goes this way, so there's a pretty big space between this bottom node and the end of the cutting, so I'm going to chop some of that off. And then same with the top, there's this much space, we don't need that much space. So I'm going to go ahead and chop that off there. Okay, then we're going to label this and we should be almost ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for this paint marker to dry a little bit before we go on to the next step. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is use some grafting tape here. And we're just going to wrap the tops of our fig cuttings and this will keep them from drying out. So that will hold in the, the humidity and the moisture. So we're going to start um, right above where we're going to put it in the soil. So for this Campanieri cutting, we're going to have these two bottom nodes under the potting mix. So you want at least one or two nodes in the potting mix. So for this one, we'll do two. So we want to start the wrapping right above where it's going to go under the soil. Now this grafting tape is pretty stretchy. So you'll want to stretch as you wrap. So we're just going to wrap the entire top part of the fig cutting. And yes, the buds will actually break through this tape. You want to be a little bit careful when you get to the top. It gets a little bit tricky, especially on these ones with apex buds. But you want to cover the entire thing here. And you can even overlap a little bit just to make sure you get everything. Okay, now we're just going to break it off. And that one is done. Now we've also seen people, instead of using grafting tape, they'll just, especially on these ones where that have fresh cuts, they will dip the top of it in uh, some beeswax and that will hold in the moisture as well. Now, if you've watched one of my previous fig rooting videos, I mentioned I like to cut off this apex bud because it seems to root better. Um, but this time I'm leaving most of them on. But these two Campanieris look pretty much identical and both have an apex bud here on the top. But I think I will leave one on and cut one off and see if there's actually any difference if one roots better than the other. So I'm just going to chop that, that apex bud off and... We'll see what happens. 
I'll show you how I wrap one that doesn't have an apex bud here. So this one's got three nodes and I think I'm going to put just one node under the potting mix and these two will be exposed to the air. So I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping here. Okay, so now it's starting to overlap the top there. So now I'm going to just twist that and make it go over the top and then bring it back down. It off. I'm going to be using these 20 ounce clear plastic cups that I got on Amazon and I'll put links to all of the materials that I'm using today in the description of the video but we're going to need to cut some drainage holes in the bottom so I like to just take some scissors and cut three slits on the bottom of each cup There we go. So there's three slits there. So there's plenty of space for the water to drain out the bottom. Let's just talk about grow medium for a few minutes. I want to let you know that everybody has their own mix and things that they use to grow. But I think one of the most popular things that people use, especially with fig cuttings, is ProMix. So I've got a couple big bags of ProMix here. They are not cheap. It's about 40 some dollars for one bag but there is quite a bit in there. Now, one of the reasons people like using the ProMix is because it's a sterile mix. There's no compost, there's no fertilizer. It's a very basic mix that you can add your own nutrients to. So it's a really good starting place for any potting soil or seed starting mix. Let me just read the ingredients really quick. I've got another bag that's already open down here. And we've got the peat moss, perlite, ground limestone and dolomite, wetting agent, and mycorrhiza. So that is all that's in there. Um, you're not going to get any fungus gnats when you use this mix, which is uh, one of the main reasons I use this. A lot of the potting mixes that you buy out there have compost in it, and when you get mixes with compost in it, you will most likely get fungus gnats. So I don't use any of those kind of potting mixes in my grow room because I really don't want to deal with those. So my go-to mix for starting seeds, pretty much any seeds, and also for fig cuttings is the Pro Mix. Now last year I actually tried something different and I think I learned about that method from Ivy Organics. So last year's cuttings, and I had a lot of cuttings last year, so I just kind of wanted to experiment. I just used a mix of perlite and vermiculite and that was it. No other additions, no potting soil, no potting mixes, just straight vermiculite and perlite. And I was really surprised with how well the figs rooted in that. Um, so this, this year I am going to be using the ProMix that I just told you about. And this is the ProMix HP. I've also used the, there's just one that's just called regular ProMix that you can get at Walmart, but I don't think they have it this time of year. So I was able to find this ProMix at a local hydroponic store and for some reason that is really the best place to find ProMix. I'm not sure why they're the ones that tend to carry it the most, but if you want to find some, just look up any hydroponic store in your area and they likely will have some. So I've already got um, quite a bit of the ProMix here. So this is what it looks like. It's very dry and fluffy and there is quite a bit of perlite in there already, but I'm actually going to be adding some more perlite to this mix. I don't want it to get too um, wet, so we want good drainage for our fig cuttings. So I've actually got three different perlites here. This one is the most fine, so there's not too much of a difference between these two. Um, this one here on the left is finer than, just slightly finer than the one on the right. And then I've got this other one that's extra large coarse. This is just monster, monster sized perlite. So I only use this really big one for large containers for the fig trees. So I'm not going to use any of that one in our mix here, but I am going to use, I'm going to use the medium coarse one. And I think I got all these on Amazon. Um, so I'm just going to pour, I'm going to probably use about two parts potting mix and two or three parts potting mix and one part of the perlite hold your breath when you do this or wear a mask because these this dust particles from the the perlite can be hazardous to your health now 
Now since this mix is really, really dry, we're going to add a significant amount of water. So I've got a gallon here, so we'll see how much we might use all of this. And this is warm water. I'm going to put on some gloves here. And then we're just going to give this a really good mix. Now since there's no fertilizer in this mix, I'm going to be adding a little bit of IV Organic All-Purpose Fertilizer. It's a 333. This is my favorite fertilizer for fig cuttings. So I'm just going to sprinkle. You don't need very much. Just sprinkle a little bit here on the top. And once my fig cuttings start growing, I'll be adding some liquid fertilizer. But this is just enough to get it going. Okay, there's a couple more things we need to do to our cuttings here before we put them in the potting mix. So there is some scoring that we're going to do on the bottom of the cutting. So I just use, you can use a knife or you can use your sharp pruners and just kind of scrape away at some of the, the bottom there. And I just go really lightly just so you could see some of that green there. And I usually do about three spots on each one. And you want to avoid scraping the, the node here. So just kind of avoid that. Now the last step is adding some rooting hormone. Now this is an optional step, but I always add this just to get the best results. So I'm using Clonex here. It's a rooting gel. There's also a rooting hormone that's in powder form but everybody has their own preference. I've used both, but I, I kind of prefer the gel. It seems like more people use gel. So I'm going to just put it a little bit in this cup here. Sometimes I just take a piece of wax paper and pour a little bit on that, but using a cup is a little bit easier. So we're just going to add a little bit to the cup there. And then what we're going to do is just take our cutting and where we have those cuts, I'm just going to rub the rooting hormone all around that and a little bit on the bottom. So I'm just going to let that soak in for a few minutes while I go and rub the other ones. Okay, it's finally time to get our cuttings in some potting mix. So I've got my cups here, so I'm just going to fill it just about part way up the cup. And then we're going to take our cuttings here and just kind of take a look and measure it. We don't want to put it all the way down. So that is probably good. You can hold it with your hand while you fill up the rest of the way. And then you just want to lightly pat it down. You don't want to press down too hard. The one thing I wanted to show you with the potting mix here is you, you really want to make sure that you do moisten it enough. So one thing that I like to do is just take a handful and squeeze it. And there should be really little to no water that comes out when you squeeze it. And it should hold together a little bit when you squeeze it. It could use a little bit more water, but I'm going to add some water to the cups after we're done here. Um, but that that's really what you want to look for is just make sure it holds together at least a little bit and doesn't just drip water. Now remember this really fat cutting that I have. Well, I think this is going to be a little too big for those cups, so I'm going to put this one in something different. So this here is called a tree pot, and it is what the really big time fig growers or big time farms propagate their cuttings in. And this is really good because you, there's really no transplanting. You can leave it in this container for a really long time and not have to worry about it. So I'm going to plant that in here, but I think I'm going to put some of the really chunky perlite in the bottom. So the bottom of these have some really pretty big holes, and I think the potting mix might just kind of fall through that. So I'm going to add some of that super coarse perlite. I'm just going to put a couple handfuls in there. That should be good. And then I'm going to fill the rest up with the potting mix. 
All right, there you go. Now I mentioned the potting mix could be a little bit wetter, so I'm going to add a little bit of water um, just to the top of each one. And I'm just using a water bottle with one of these cool little attachments that I got on Amazon that puts a really nice stream of water over the, the soil. Now I'm just going to move these over to a tote where they're going to stay until they root. Okay, here is the tote. We got this at Costco. I've got a towel on the bottom and a heat mat. And I've got the heat mat set up to a thermostat and we are set at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And now we just need to add our fig cuttings. And don't forget to put our, this is our probe for the thermostat. So we're just gonna put it down in one of these cups, probably about halfway down. They're gonna stay in this container and we'll check on them every few days or so. The ones that are in clear cups, we'll be able to see when they root and we'll keep them in here until they start leafing out. And once that happens, we'll move them over under the lights. Have you rooted your own fig cuttings? Let me know what your process is. Do you do something different? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.